All right, so we are back. Yes, it's gone. I did it again. So Buzz Cut, Buzz Lightyear, freaking tic-tac-toe forehead weight is back. Deal with it. But speaking of another man with a massive forehead and a massive fight coming up. Sometimes I swear, man, my transition game, a little rough. But we are back to talk about KSI and some sparring footage that he has released or someone has released that is 18 seconds which means it's 13 seconds more than logan paul's training footage i think i'm in the window that i can break this down let's not waste any more time i need to take a look at this ksi's first actual sparring footage how much better has ksi gotten are there still some things he can work on what is ksi gonna look like on october 14th first tommy fury the breakdown let's go all right so let's take a look Okay, so there's a lot to get to. <laughs> so no, obviously, this was the the one second of sparring footage that KSI put out uh, about a week and a half to two weeks ago and, and said he couldn't wait for the breakdown on. Obviously, this is a troll from KSI. It's a funny one. We, we actually did, though, on the breakdown channel, break this thing down. And all joking aside, there is kind of some stuff to take away from it. First off being... KSI looking like he's thrown a big shot and potentially landed a big shot on who a lot of people thought was me in the in the spar, which is not true. Outside of that, you see one of KSI's coaches back here calling him on or at least telling one of these sparring partners to move, right? Like move to your left, circle, circle, and make KSI try to cut him off maybe. I'm not sure, but you could tell from even just this little bit, this guy's feet are not set which means either he was evading a shot or got hit with one and maybe is trying to reset. His hands are down, which again tells me that he's not looking to attack, which probably means that KSI threw one of these big right hands. And on top of that, you see KSI coming back off his lead foot, which means he probably planted and threw. But let's take more time than I usually last in a bedroom, which is around this one second mark, and dive a little deeper into some actual footage that we can get something from that KSI released after this let's take a look at the real sparring footage all right nice little warm-up here nice little warm-up show the guns <laughs> so all right a couple things first off they used sound effects for JJ landing punches there. We all know Idris Virgo looking like he should be in a fucking Creed movie and congrats to him on a big win this last weekend. But let's let's take a look at the footage here once again. I wanted to play it through one time so you guys got to see it. Yes, okay, so I got the Scully on. He's on Demon Time. All right, first thing you see is him paw out the jab. Kind of haphazardly pawed out. Like again, there's there's not a real intention behind this because we all know this is is range finding for that one, right? The big right hand over. This is KSI's biggest punch, his best punch, his go-to punch, and the one 100% he is looking to be the one-hitter quitter for Tommy Fury. This is the shot. This is the one. If KSI beats Tommy Fury, it will be because of this shot. Point blank period. It may not end the fight by itself, but it will be the catalyst at least for the end of the fight. If KSI is able to knock Tommy out, it will be because of this right hand. And he does. He sticks it on Idris Virgo here. Idris sees it, rolls with it, does a good job rolling with it. It kind of collateral damage off the shoulder, right? He gets a shoulder on it, but it still lands. And again, I know we're going literally frame by frame here, but it doesn't take a frame by frame to see what the issue is with the shot. And I know people are not going to like when I say this, but this is the issue because let's say right where idris fails to catch this shot or parry it with his backhand that tommy is able to get a shoulder up right he's able to boom and ksi is left in this position head over his toes hands by his side and this shot uppercut or even the hook over the top even though ksi is doing a pretty decent job here i don't know if it's on purpose or not but his chin is tucked under his shoulder that's not bad but this backhand rife for an uppercut because of how much KSI puts into that right hand it's it's all or nothing either he lands it or he hits you hard enough to knock you off balance and reset or if none of those things happen and he throws that big right hand with his hand directly at his knees here here comes the counter uppercut it's there for the taking it's just a matter of can KSI get to the shot 
hurt you or again knock you off balance enough to not let you be able to throw counter shots behind it right all right so even in this again i, I know we're gonna pause a lot because we kind of have to even in the, this just little exchange, right? You see KSI go essentially jab for jab with Idris Virgo here. And by the way, he's sparring with Idris Virgo, who is a talented boxer. And obviously they don't fight nearly the same way, but it's, it's a good look for KSI to be in there with a guy with 12 wins under his belt, a seasoned professional. This is good. You watch KSI here. The jab gets there first, sticks him. And, and listen, JJ lands his as well. It's a solid jab on the return. So both guys land there. You just don't want to see that be the case continuously. In the Logan Paul 2 fight, I'm pretty sure it was a trade fest with those two, especially with their lead hand. Logan would jab, KSI would jab with him, and both guys, for the most part, would land. It was both guys landing their jabs, head not off the center line. And again, if you do want to influence Tommy's head movement, that jab's going to be very important for KSI. Even if he's at a, a disadvantage with his reach, just pumping it out there and trying to see where Tommy's head goes after the jab's thrown, that's going to influence that right hand that we keep talking about, that big fucking monster of a right hand. If he's going to land it, he's going to have to get Tommy to slide his head off center to the power hand or faint him enough with that jab to get those hands up and out where he can find his way to maneuver around it with the big over. How do you plan on doing what Jake Paul couldn't? Well, I'm going to just stand there and fight him. Simple as that. You know, Jake, he ran away. He ran away from Tommy's combinations. I'm not running away. I'm standing in the middle of the ring and I'm fighting him. I mean, listen, Jake did have a really hard time dealing with combination punching from Tommy Fury. It was something he hadn't had to deal with before and it was a tough adjustment for him. KSI is gonna experience the same thing and he calls it running away from those combinations. Jake moving his feet did help alleviate a little bit of that to where he could counter punch. AJ's continually saying he's gonna plant his feet in the middle and fight Tommy, which again, sounds nice. It, it sound it sound good, but <laughs> in practicality, to be able to stand there in the middle and fight him means you're gonna have to deal with combination punching. And for JJ, that means you're gonna have to eat some damage if you're not willing to move your feet. If you're gonna stand there and you're gonna try to trade with Tommy, you have to eat some damage. And again, hope that that right hand gets over the top of one of Tommy's elongated jabs, or maybe he over commits and you counter over it but not a lot of planning to move or change angles you're you're relying on 50 50s and those go either way all right so there you have it listen you're not going to get too much more out of these videos because obviously jj doesn't want to show too much to tommy or me or anybody else that's gonna say some things that people might not like but but i actually think that from what we saw from JJ, there were some good things, like again, his willingness to be in the fire. There's some things that I think could be detrimental, like his willingness to be in the fire. <laughs> again, it's just a trade-off. It's what you value as a fighter and what your strengths are. JJ's strengths are obviously his explosivity, his self-belief in that explosivity, in that power to be able to fully commit to it mentally, physically, in one congruent motion forward to just think, when I touch this guy with a right hand, it's going to sleep him. But I just don't know on the night if it will be enough. But that's where I leave it because I don't have those answers. But October 14th, we absolutely will. I hope you guys are tuned into that. And I hope you guys come by for the Way Concept live stream. 24 hours we are live October 13th all the way through the end of the Prime card here on this channel, but not here in this room. Guests coming through. It's going to be a great time. What happens? Is KSI a little bit of the same that we've seen over the last couple of fights from that footage? Yes. Is that improvement enough to take down Tommy Fury? I don't have those answers, but I guess we'll find out.